So when React Native was announced at the first React Conf nearly 10 years ago, it had a very simple premise, which was web, the good parts. And from this basic concept, React Native has grown to become the most impactful framework for building client-side applications. Fast forward to now, and React Native powers hundreds of the most used apps in the App Store trending list every single day. And there's no signs of slowing down. So where do we go from here? Well, I'm Evan Bacon, an engineer and the creator of Expo Router. It's the first file-based router for building React apps that run on both web and native platforms. By simply creating files in the app directory, Expo Router instantly creates robust navigation for both your native app and website. It uses familiar web APIs such as Link and Href to move between routes. And it's also a nested routing system, enabling you to organize routes into folders to establish shared UI like tab bars and headers. And it uses native primitives like UI navigation controller on Apple devices to ensure transitions feel truly native to the platform. We actually built the React Conf app with Expo Router and it feels pretty native. Now there are many aspects to app development and Expo Router provides universal solutions to most of them. But all these solutions are primarily targeted at client-side apps. And there's only so much that you can do with a client on its own, as we just saw from Dan's fantastic talk. Things get really interesting when you bring in data fetching and server rendering. From a data perspective, most native apps operate essentially like a single-page website, performing all data fetching and rendering on the client. This means slower performance and substantially less networking. Popular native apps such as Lyft and uh, Netflix and Reddit, many others, use some form of server-driven UI in their native apps. But it's very complicated to configure, and as a result, out of reach for most developers. Now, they do this so they can A-B test and render UIs with high degrees of variation based on all sorts of criteria, such as user type, location, currency, etc. And the approaches all vary in many small ways, but they do share some common architecture, such as uh, JSON as static UI representation. You can think of this as basically the HTML for a custom native application. And we can see a pattern here. The pattern is that server-driven UI is an important feature for building apps, and it's not very accessible for indie developers. So what if we can make server-driven UI available to everyone, but also the most powerful version of it ever imagined. And that's the goal of Expo Router. Now, to do this, we're bringing React server components, the most cutting-edge approach to server rendering, to all platforms through Expo Router. And this is a huge undertaking, because it will require many refinements across the universal ecosystem, across lots of libraries. Uh, our official implementation of universal RSC is currently in early development, but I think it's worth sharing uh, uh, you know, an update on the progress we made so far, because it's pretty awesome. And uh, you know, it's actually pretty inspiring to see what this stuff is capable of. So there's a lot to RSC, such as server actions, concurrent routing, flights, payloads, uh, et cetera. But I just figure it would be easier to show you guys a demo of what's possible. Now, I've been really interested in AI apps lately, uh, but it's historically been pretty hard to build high-powered AI native apps. This is because streaming and server rendering are both critical aspects of working with an LLM. Now, with React server components in Expo Router, it's actually really easy to work with AI. So here, I have a ChatGPT-like app, which pings OpenAI via React server action, and streams down native text from the server. Everything that's returned back is at least partially server rendered. So we can ask it, should native apps be server rendered? And uh, see what the, the result is. It will stream back something like, native apps are typically not server rendered, uh, you know, because this is, this is cutting edge stuff here. Now the UI consists of a scroll view with some messages and a text input, which pings our server action. Now, to create the server action, we have another file which defines use server in a function. This function will be extracted out of the bundle and then turned into an endpoint on the client. 
we can render React Native text here instead of a recursive async function using suspense to keep the stream open. Now, one novel aspect of uh, our server system here is that it's multi-platform. So when you make a request or it receives a request from an iOS device, then it renders the iOS version of the server or the Android or the web version of the server. And that's how it knows to render uh, React Native text from iOS or React Native text from React Native web. So complex bundler magic. Now, let's see. When the client makes a request, an RSC payload is sent back with suspense to keep the stream open. It has the static representation of our root JSX loaded inside of it, a URL to the client code needed for this RSC to load, and then the currently rendered text element. As the stream progresses, more content will be rendered, and React will update the tree with new visuals. And finally, the stream will complete, React will close the connection, and we'll have our, our mounted element. And this is just one part of a much larger puzzle, but it's super powerful, because it means that we can send any arbitrary JavaScript so long as the native bindings are already on our target device. Notice there's no native code being sent here. It's all just JavaScript, which coordinates with code that you ship to the App Store. Think of the native side of this like a browser or a custom browser, which can have custom native views in it. And uh, yeah, this is all just the basics, but it, uh, it scales up pretty nicely. So we can use this to, uh, to render any native UI. So let's do something uh, a little bit more exciting. When React Native was first demoed, they showed a truly native movies app. So I thought it could be fun to pull movies into this prototype somehow. For inspiration, I looked at what the state-of-the-art best AI apps had to offer. So first, in ChatGPT4, when you ask for movies, it renders a bullet list of markdown. You know, it's got like some links inside of it, and there's some bold text. It's neat. I also tried with 4.0, and same deal, but a bit faster. On Gemini, it does the same, a little bit faster, and this time with some inlined images. But again, this is all just markdown streaming down and rendering in a markdown renderer. With RSC, we can do a lot better. So here, we can match any query to search for movies, ping the movie database, and server render an interactive native movies card with images and UI menus and animations and blurs all from the iOS system settings. We can search for more actors. We can send that back to the device. <laughs> And we can even integrate with native APIs, such as the calendar API, render down a calendar card, create calendar events without having to sign into anything or create a database. Uh, feels truly native to the device and, frankly, just incredible. So overall, a way better user experience uh, and a lot less reading. But even more exciting than this cutting-edge user experience is the developer experience, because it only took slightly more code than the text example from earlier. Here, we use the suspense boundary to render our skeleton loader, and then we, we fetch our movies inside of an async function, and we stream them down to the client. Um, you know, the, all the secrets, everything that we use to fetch, all of it's secured off of the native device. That might not sound too impressive to web developers, but for native development, that's pretty hard. I look at a lot of native apps, and I see a lot of secrets in production. And to make the cards interactive, we simply create a wrapper client component, which has a bit of state inside of it. The JS logic here will be split out of the main bundle and fetched conditionally when the server renders the UI. Um, and then it's also rendered down to Hermes bytecode. So you can think of this like a script tag being injected on the web, except if the web could render bytecode and render it instantly when it gets it. Meaning we're essentially delivering the best strategies from the best web-only frameworks, but running in a custom JavaScript environment that pushes the platform to its absolute limits. Because after we jump through all of the hoops that are required to get server rendering working, we aren't just rendering to the DOM. Now, these are truly native views. We have the Xcode inspector attached here. Everything is fully native. It means you have smooth scrolling, high performance, all the platform behaviors that you would expect. It's progressively rendered, best practices, and truly limitless. But the best part has to be, hands down, that it runs everywhere. So, 
Expo supports iOS, Android, web, Mac OS devices with uh, M chip. I have this app running on every device inside of my house on my Vision Pro. It's fantastic. It actually does make the Vision Pro pretty useful because they don't have a Spotify app. So I can show animations and pre-recordings all day, but I think it would be pretty sweet if I just show you guys the actual demo running on my actual phone right now. So we will give that a shot. I've got my Cybertruck shirt on in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> Let's open up QuickTime here. Swap over to, oh, there it is. All right, so this is my, my phone. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Got the Expo AI app here so we can open it up. And this is an end-to-end -end React Native app running server components. This is the, uh, like, as far as I know, the first server rendered React Native app. And uh, let's go ahead and hit list new movies. And we got our trending movies here. We can scroll through them, look pretty good. We can long press to see the see the you know, casting crew. One thing you'll notice is actually, when I do that long press, there's going to be a little loading indicator. What that is is a server action fetching more data and rendering down more UI menu elements, and then pulling them in. So we can search for an actor, just like we did before. Um, we could maybe select a movie, create an event. Create an event will stream down a calendar card. We could schedule the event. Uh, I don't actually need to schedule an event for this. Uh, but we can do a lot more than just what I showed earlier. Uh, so I love the idea of mixing the server with native querying events. So here we could look up something like, um, what's Charlie's phone number? And now it's going to stream down a contact card, which can request contact permission, and then show me uh, everyone named Charlie on my phone. So here we can select Charlie Cheever. It sends that back up to the AI model. We could say send a message. It will stream down a message sending card right there. We can come in here. It's text input. We can you know, modify it up a little bit. You can hit other or whatever. Like you can, you can send message. If I send the message, it will actually open my messages to Charlie, who's my boss. Uh, so. We will hold off on that one for now. Uh, and <laughs> you can, um, oh, here, this one's pretty sweet. OK, so I just added this the other day. We can do show me some things to do on the Vegas Strip. You know, we're here in, uh, in Vegas. Now it's going to render down, whoa. <laughs> The, uh, oh, I think the computer just fell asleep. Wow, that was anticlimactic. It will render down a native Apple Maps view after pinging Google Maps, and then we can just slide through all of the locations here. And again, this is server rendered. The client, uh, the, the map view is a client component, but all of the data gets fetched in the server, and then the, the, like, this carousel that we see here, fully server rendered. And you just can create these magical experiences with this, which feel incredible, really pushing server components to their limit. We can select this location. We could get the weather for here. We can see the weather. It's pretty hot. It's also European friendly. We can change that to Celsius with a, a native switch component. We could even book an Uber here. Grab the Uber, request an Uber. And now it's going to order an Uber over to the Luxor. So much server rendering is possible here, because it's, it's not just that it's possible, it's also easy to do. So we're able to just continually throw more and more at it. I mean, this is it's a magical experience. I love this. So now we're going to go ahead and, let's see, swap back over here. We're on my, uh, I mean, and we've got the dev server running, uh, running here as well. I mean, we could just start the dev server and uh, hit the W key, open it on web. Because if we can run it on native, we can run it on web as well. So you get the weather. I think it's still coded to Austin. It's using like Cloudflare IP. Uh, same deal. We could say, you know, what's the square root of four or something? See, uh, four is two. So it can still type out text. Uh, we can even open it here on the desktop. We got the desktop version of it running. You know, show me some new movies. And now it's going to render in and stream down movies, running on all platforms universally. Server components are pretty powerful. So let's swap back over here. And by the way, um, 
It's pretty sweet that that just worked. Uh, first try. <laughs> Yep. So that's what it looks like when we take the modern state of server rendering and AI and bring them universally to every single platform, seamlessly gliding between server and client in a fully typed file-based framework. We only have to configure APIs for a single platform, which is the server. And it works uh, you know, better than ever before to build things that work across different platforms. Waterfalls and parallel requests are all handled for us automatically, because this isn't just some random server rendering system I stood up for native. This is React server components running on native. It's like the best that there is right now. Uh, static client code is automatically removed from the bundle. Uh, we SSG the RSC, we put it inside, that's a lot of acronyms, we put it inside the iPhone. <laughs> if I were to load that in airplane mode, it opens up instantly, because it has all the, anything that fails is tied to a network request in offline mode. So it still feels like a native app when we use it. The secrets are all secured on the server. We're using Hermes Bike. There's just tons and tons of new benefits, too many to get into. Uh, and it really just redefines what's possible on our mobile devices and enables new types of apps to be built in record amount of time. So I'm extremely excited about this. Now, Everything that I just showed you, that app, is Expo SDK 51 apps. That's out today with React 19 and new architecture. The parts that uh, are still work in progress are going to be the concurrent router, the server actions, the, the, the server render part. And we move fast, we can have that out later this year. So we'll have maybe all the pieces, or, uh, or maybe sometime next year, I don't know. So consider this an RFC. Is server rendering something that you want to see on native? I believe so. I loved using this. this is, there's just never been a developer experience quite like this before in native development. It feels like web development in the most important ways. Like the most important pieces are written once and shared across platforms. So I'm a huge fan. And uh, <laughs> of course, I'm always looking for people, talented engineers for my team. So if you're interested in ushering in the future of app development, reach out on Twitter. I'm at BaconBricks. I'm Evan Bacon, and this has been Universal Server Components and Expo Router. And thanks.